It is time to preview what's ahead for investors this week and joining us, of course, our usual late news money man, Scott Phillips, Chief Investment Officer from Motley Fool. Last week, overall, the market was down almost 1%. Scott, since then, Wall Street closed higher. Are we in for a good day on the markets here tomorrow? <laughs> Peter, that's the $64 question. And at the moment, the futures look pretty positive. Right now, up about two thirds of 1%. Of course, as we know, anything can happen overnight, particularly with uh, the US lead. But the good news, I suppose, is as you say, we actually closed at an all time high on Tuesday, then lost a bit as inflation fears reared their head. But the US market seems to have got themselves under control, that fear under control, and hopefully some good news for us on the market tomorrow. Okay, let's put you on the spot. You've been talking a lot about volatility. Just reiterate your thoughts for anxious investors and give us a, well, let's call it a volatility buster, a company we buy and tuck away for a couple of years or so. A nice one. All right, so uh, here's the thing about volatility. It's always going to be with us. It always has been. Uh, I call volatility the ticket to the dance. You just kind of got to pay up and, and ride the wave. So you need to learn to do that. You can't get away without it. To your point about a, a bottom draw stock, a company I own personally for absolute full disclosure, but I like a lot, is a company called Washington H. Sol Pattinson, one of the less attractive, less exciting names. But this company has outperformed the market over one, three, five, ten, and 15 years. Um, a listed investment company that is run by the fourth generation of the same family, Peter. So it's one of those stocks I sleep very, very well at night. Knowing it's in my portfolio, I put it in my sister's portfolio as well. It's a recommendation for our members. It's just a company that is going to be looked after by the people who run it. And if you need to put something in the bottom drawer, you want to make sure the people in charge are trustworthy and doing the right thing by you. And I think Sol Pats is that business. OK, thank you, Scott. Important wage and jobs data comes out this week. Wednesday, we get wage figures for the March quarter. What's the early consensus? Yeah, and of course, Peter, wage figures are what the RBA is really looking for, as well as price inflation for when they might move rates next. So this is important for all of us who get paid a wage, but also important economically. At the moment, the expectations are for a gain of 0.6% for the quarter. That's about 1.5% for the uh, the full year, year on year. That's a nice little uptick, as I said, on that, on that yearly number, which is nice. Not quite enough, I don't think, to stir the RBA, but going in the right direction. And as I said, more importantly, for those of us who get paid a wage, hopefully means pay rises might be around the corner. Thursday, unemployment figures. Economists, what are they expecting? Yeah, a slight decrease down from about 5.6 to maybe 5.5. Of course, the lower we get, the more important that participation rate becomes. And the way the maths works, the more people who stick their hand up and say, I'd like a job, please, influences the unemployment rate as much as those who are putting or getting into jobs. The good news this week was that the SEEK jobs report came out the highest level on record over 23 plus years. Lots and lots of vacancies. So hopefully that's turning into lots of jobs for lots of Australians. Good on you. We round things out Friday to finish up tonight with retail trade figures for the last month. And these have been really volatile, Peter. The kind of bounce back from the COVID recession we had, we've had a couple of good months and a couple of bad months, one up, one down. We're due, if, if the pattern falls, for, uh, follows for a fall, I don't think it's going to be the case, though, and expectations are for a moderate increase in retail sales. Fingers crossed that's true, because, again, that's another really, really important part of job creation in Australia. Scott Phillips from Motley Fool, our late news money man. As always, terrific to have you on the bulletin. Thank you. Thanks, Peter.